not really even though patients with rheumatological problems are prone for other infections we are now having some evidence saying that rheumatological patients are not prone for uh, COVID-19 infections unless they are on a very high dose of steroid tablets more than 10 milligrams per day regularly which we usually don't put them on it um, if not they are not at increased risk of having COVID-19 infections so the risk factor which holds good for general population which is old age and other comorbid illnesses like diabetes and hypertension puts them at higher risk of having COVID-19 infection but not just the rheumatological problems. Most of the time it does not. Uh, the only caveat is the steroid tablets. So if they are on high dose of steroid tablets which is more than 10 milligrams per day regularly for more than three to six months then yes they are at increased chance of getting COVID-19 infections and serious COVID-19 infections but almost all other treatments which we use which are known as immunomodulatory treatments and some are even immunosuppressants but fortunately they do not increase the chance of them getting serious COVID-19 infections. The reason we believe is there are so many networking immunological pathways in the body. So the drugs which we use to suppress the immunity just blocks one small portion of it. The immunity which is necessary for COVID-19 infection is a different aspect of the immunity and that is still intact. So um, all the drugs which we use currently do not actually put them at increased risk of having serious COVID-19 infection except the high dose steroids. So if a patient with rheumatological problems develop COVID-19 infection, they should follow the, the same protocol as how everybody else follows. But on top of it, we do recommend them to stop their current rheumatological treatments, which is the disease modifying and the immunosuppressants. We do advise them to stop it for minimum two weeks till they recover from the COVID-19 infections and then to restart them again. So you don't keep them off the drugs for a long period of time because that will end up having a flare of their condition and the condition will become more severe than how it was before. So generally, they should just stop for two weeks and they should just follow all precautions as how, as how everyone else should follow washing hands and uh, social distancing and all those things. So apart from stopping the current treatments for two weeks minimum, we don't do anything different to rheumatological patients. There are a lot of treatments which is used in COVID-19, which are all used in our rheumatological practice commonly. The commonest one which everyone would have heard of is hydroxychloroquine. And we rheumatologists have used it for several years in several of our patients like in systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis. So it is one of the commonest drug we prescribe in our rheumatological practice. And this hydroxychloroquine did hit the headlines for a long period of time um, in the beginning of this COVID-19 pandemic, saying that it does protect. But unfortunately, this hydroxychloroquine uh, in the trials have been negative. It does not clearly protect the healthcare workers or anybody from COVID-19 infections. The problem is um, not that the drug doesn't work. It is just that hydroxychloroquine for a long period of time, we knew that it takes time for it to work. You need to go a higher dose in the beginning and then uh, take it for a longer period of time for it to start working. So in other rheumatological problems, we normally say it will take at least six weeks for hydroxychloroquine to start working. So this is a problem with hydroxychloroquine in treating as a co prevention therapy for COVID-19 um, um, prevention. So it has to be taken at a very high dose and in the beginning and for a longer period of time. And unfortunately, this is higher than the routine dose which we use in our clinical practice and that causes more side effects. So hydroxychloroquine takes time to work and if we have to make it work earlier, then we have to use a higher dose and which causes more side effects. So this is a problem in giving hydroxychloroquine as a prevention ter therapy or as a treatment for patients with COVID-19 infections, rather than saying that it does not work 
pharmacologically. It does work pharmacologically, but practically it's not possible. So hydroxychloroquine is out of the treatment uh, paradigm or the prevention treatment for COVID. The other treatments commonly used for COVID-19 um, treatment are drugs like tocilizumab, injection form, um, which is otherwise known as Actemra. And there is a tablet called colchicin. And another more useful treatment is steroids, dexamethasone. So these treatments do have a role. So I'll go one by one. Uh, I'll go in the reverse order, which has more efficacy, the dexamethasone steroids. So the steroids have show, been shown clearly in the trial to be very effective in patients with moderate to severe COVID-19 infections and it decreases their hospitalization days and it decreases the, the chance of them getting mechanical ventilation. It decreases the oxygen usage. So it does work in most patients uh, with moderate to severe COVID-19 infection. And now it is a routine practice to use it all, all over the world. The drug colchicin is also useful. The trials have been um, not that great, the outcome, but uh, it has shown a modest improvement in patients with, uh, again, uh, moderate to severe COVID-19 infections. The colchicin has a double advantage of treating the inflammation, but also improving the heart outcome. Patients with COVID-19 infections can die due to either heart attack, pulmonary embolism, um, or cytokine storm, what we say, which basically the whole body gets a lot of inflammatory reaction and that kills almost every organ of the body. So, so one of the common cause of death in patients with COVID-19 is a heart attack. So this colchicin has a dual role. It prevents the inflammation and it also prevents the heart attack. So it should work, but not in everybody. So the patients who are at risk of having heart attack, it should work. Uh, and in moderate to severe COVID-19 infection. The last one is the tocilizumab injection, which is used uh, now routinely all over the world. Again, the trials have not been that great. The reason being, most of these trials are done in a, in a, in a, in a general population. I mean, there is no clear categorization. Every patient with COVID-19 infection are recruited into the trial. So the inclusion criteria for these trials are not that stringent because we were desperate to try some new treatments. But what we know from a clinical practice is if we choose the patient correctly, these treatments do work in a small group of patients. For example, this tocilizumab, if the patient's blood ferritin levels are going up and up and up, then they'll definitely benefit from it. So again, as severe COVID-19 infections with impending cytokine storm, where the ferritin levels are going up, tocilizumab do work. So almost a lot of rheumatological treatments are tried in COVID-19 infection and have really changed the outcome in our clinical practice.